Hello and welcome to the tutorial for using the MicroLogix to Micro 800 conversion tool within Connected Components Workbench version 11. In this video, we'll be converting a MicroLogix 1000 program to Connected Components Workbench version 11.01 .01 with the feature pack installed. We can break our conversion into three easy steps. First, we need to save our MicroLogix project in the correct format. Second, we're going to run the MicroLogix to Micro 800 conversion tool. And then third, we'll review our code and make any changes. So, let's begin. The first thing we want to do is open up our Logix 500 and then the project that we want to convert. So we're going to go to File, Open, select the project that we want to convert. Just verify that this is the project that you'd like to convert. And then we're going to go back up to File, and we're going to go to Save As. Under the Save As type, we're going to select the library file, which is the .slc file format. And then we're going to select Export Database, and then Export Options. This will allow the comments to come through. And in here, we're just going to be changing the name. Uh, so it's easier for us to find. And then select OK. And then after that, we're just going to hit Save. And you have a couple prompts here. Just click OK on the prompts um, to get you through it. There is a report that it generates, so you can save that if you like. But we're just going to skip through that for this tutorial. Next, we're going to open up uh, CCW, Connected Components Workbench, in this case version 11. And we're going to go up to Tools, and then MicroLogix Library Converter. And then under the MicroLogix source, we want to select that .slc file that we just created. So we're going to select a little ellipsis, and then the .slc file. Under documentation, using existing name, we're going to deselect that, and we're going to select it ourselves. Um, that's that file that we changed the name to, so it's a .eas file. So we're going to select that. And for the Micro 800 target, this is application dependent, uh, but for our example here, we're just going to be using a Micro 820. So we're going to be converting down to a Micro 820. You can leave that option to concatenate the um, comments. You can leave that and then just select OK. And while it's doing its conversion, uh, you'll start to see things populate on the left hand side there. And uh, when everything is complete, it'll give you an output report of any warnings or errors. So we're going to be checking that among uh, a couple other couple other things. And we're not going to go into a deep dive of all of the conversion um, nuances, but we will look at the report and a few things in the project. So this is the output. It shows you any of the warnings or errors that may have uh, collected during the conversion process. And it will also give you a report uh, in CSV format. So you can save that for future reference. After we're done checking the output, we're going to check our actual code. So we're going to go to our main program here and just see if anything's different. And right away, we do see that things are a little bit different, but there's no blaring warnings or errors. Uh, that's really all that we're checking for right now. As we scroll down, we do end up seeing a, a yellow triangle down at the bottom there as one of the outputs. And that's because the Micro 820 only has seven outputs and not nine. So we're going to just go in here real quick and change that output 
to be the last output on the micro 820 which is the seventh one so we're going to select that and just hit OK and our error goes away and then lastly we're going to go into global variables and just check our uh, bit variables to make sure that our comments went through if we scroll down here we see the B3 as an array we expand that and we see that our comments do come through and that will complete the tutorial for MicroLogix to Micro 800 conversion tool. You can comment below if you have any suggestions for future videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get updated on new videos as they become available. And be sure to visit the Rumsey.com website for more industrial and automation news articles and training.